In earlier videos, I showed how to set up this steel plate uh, with a fixed support at one end, a uh, applied moment uh, at the other end with a, holes, a hole here and two notches. And we saw that the mesh needed to be refined around these areas to pick up the stress concentrations that we were looking to see in, in um, around those areas. Now we can quite easily switch this to a, a dynamic analysis to find out the natural frequencies of vibration of this structure. Now we can have it, we can use the loads and include the loads in the analysis, but the, the loads actually change the natural frequency of vibration. So I'm going to look at completely free vibration, no loads, just the structure to see what the natural frequency frequencies and modes of vibration are. So if we close that and go back to the, the workbench screen, this workbench screen here, on the project there is an option to replace the analysis, replace with, so we click on that down arrow, replace with, and we do this modal analysis. And so there's quite a few different options here. Uh, one, the one I'm interested in for this is just a simple modal uh, analysis to see the natural frequencies of the structure. And that takes a couple of seconds for it to pick up what it needs and to to dis discard the bits of the, the static structural analysis that it didn't doesn't need for this. Not quite so. Not quite sure why it takes quite so long, but. Um, Okay, so it's finished now. So I just changed the, the analysis to model. Uh, it has picked up the engineering data, the geometry, the model. Some of these now need a, a bit further refinement. So let's go into the model and see what um, what it has retained from the static structural analysis, and we'll make some changes to it um, for our dynamic analysis. Okay, so as I said, I, d I don't want this moment of the four, so I'm going to um, delete that. I'm going to tell you that the force has suppressed the moment, I'm going to also delete that. So here's how this pre stress moon. So we can add the modal analysis onto the end of the structure of the static structure analysis, and we can pick up the loading, the stress, the pre stress from that. But here I'm saying that I'm looking at the free vibration and no stresses. We'll see that uh, again in when we look uh, in the next video at buckling and buckling analysis, where we do actually pick up the loads from the static structural analysis to use for buckling. So we will um, remove all of these. So we can click and shift and click to select multiple ones and delete these. Okay, so we have um, we're back to the basic jam meshed solid. Um, Geometry there is solid structural steel. So that's all fine. The mesh, I want to do something with the mesh. If we leave that mesh there, it, it slows down the analysis quite a bit and it's probably uh, not really needed. So dynamic analysis is more looking at the overall body. Um, so we can, to speed things up a bit, we'll, we'll simplify the mesh. So we'll remove this refinement and we'll right click on that and delete it. Now it says to update it, but even if I update it here, it appears not to, or to generate, even if I generate the mesh, it, it still retains the re refinement. So I'm not sure quite why that is, but what I, I do here is we pick on the mesh, click on sizing here, and change it to a medium mesh. And now right click on the mesh and hit generate or update. And it'll change it to a, a much coarser mesh and let's get rid of the refinement. Now I'll change it back. Uh, I'll stick with the um, fine mesh and I think uh, update is probably enough to do this. Just 
um, and working on that and there okay so that looks like a reasonable mesh for dynamic analysis could possibly refine it around here there's a bit scarce of elements there but again it's the overall structure we're looking at Now, what sort of, um, so it's kind of just ready to analyze. What sort of, um, we want to have a look at the analysis settings. So I've said the number of modes to find, so the different, so it's six, which is quite a, few, quite a lot. Typically in structure, we're interested in the first one or two modes of vibration, depends. Um, but to see, to look at the output, we want to insert um, typically to total deformation for mode one. Um, uh, insert total deformation and mode two, etc. So let's just solve for that and see how it gets on. Give me ISO view and we'll solve it. So this takes a few seconds. I'll, I'll, I'll pause the video and start again. Okay, that took perhaps 20 seconds on this machine, but we can see total deformation, total deformation. We'll see, we'll explore these in a bit more detail. We see down here in the bottom right hand corner this mode of vibration of the six, sorry, the frequencies of vibration of the six modes, and they're plotted on this graph here. When uh, the modes, it's kind of it's not a particularly good graph, I think, but anyway, the, the tops of these bars, the, the frequency is on the y axis, the mode is on the so we'll, we'll have a look at that now. So let's let's just add in all all all, all the modes. So um, if we click uh, total there, uh, mode three. Um, right click on that, insert total deformation. Come down here and make a mode four. We're going to enter, insert deformation for mode five. Type five and hit enter, and we see one, two, three, four, and one more for mode six. Six, and now we can t improve these uh, descriptions. We'll do that in a second. Let's just solve to, to, to right click and evaluate all results, which doesn't require a full solution, it's pretty quick. Okay, so one thing we can do if we highlight all of these and right click on them. You can they rename based on definition, and if we do that, it it, it gives a more descriptive um, title to each of them. It picks up the the frequencies for each of the vibration uh, for each of the modes. Um, you need to be careful if we rerun this analysis. We'll see it could change, add some mass to the, the structure, or change the material, or whatever. These by these modes, these descriptions do not update automatically. So it's a snapshot. That's what they are at the moment. Okay, so let's explore these modes and see what it looks like. And again, the the the, the animated version of of that is quite useful here because it is in fact a dynamic analysis. So that's the mode, the simple bending mode of vibration about the minor axis. We can stop that. Thirty three mega, thirty three hertz, thirty three cycles per second, which is um, a pretty high frequency. You know. And, um, it is a fairly short, stiff bar, so you know it's, it's, it's quite a high frequency. Mode two is bending about the major axis, so simple bending about the major axis, you know, 115 hertz. Mode three is a kind of higher mode, second mode about the minor axis. Mode four is an interesting one; it's a torsional, twisting mode. Mode five is uh, a higher mode again about the minor axis, so five ten, and mode six is a a more complex mode about the the major axis. Now these uh, there is a theoretical analysis for um, it's available in, in textbooks on vibration analysis for a simple cantilever, okay, without a hole in it, a solid bar. So let, let's look at some of the results from that and see how they compare. So this is the formula here um, from these from the various textbooks for the three first modes of vibration, about the minor axis and the major axis. So about the minor axis, it says the frequency is 33.4 hertz, 
and so it gives 33.8 for the bar with the hole and that's a reasonably close match. The higher modes 209, theoretical 184, but again the, the effect of the hole uh, is coming in, in maybe influencing that and again the higher mode again the third mode 586 versus 510 theoretical for, um, sorry, the other way around, 586 theoretical a solid bar so removing the the the, the hole removes mass and it also lowers stiffness um so it can and it's the, the effect the, the you know lowering mass in theory would, would on its own would increase um reducing mass would increase the frequency increasing stiffness would increase the frequency so and reducing stiffness would reduce the frequency so we're, we're removing mass which would tend to raise the frequency removing stiffness which would tend to lower it so there's a, a combined effect going on and, and, and it has a bigger effect on the higher modes which is reasonable but the major axis the theoretical says 117 hertz the ANSYS has 115 which is not bad um, and for the for higher mode 733 ANSYS gives 613 for the and again the whole may be influencing that quite a bit important to put no note an important point to note about these uh, you have to be careful with the units it's best to use um and that's kind of correct there i need to correct that newtons per square meter okay just... everything in in si units because the density the newtons and then we're dividing e by rho so we need to make sure that's quite a tricky one it's not if you can simply convert these to newtons and millimeters for instance you will not get the correct answer um, because newtons there do g the 9.81 meters per second squared is needed you know multiply m by g to get newtons so just be careful about that but anyway the, the they're reasonably okay um again as is, is producing so there's a higher mode mode six and you can see the whole is, is influencing that quite a bit and it's reasonable to to expect the differences between the theoretical between the solid bar and the bar with the hole in it. Now the other thing we can do is change the material. Okay. Now the formula again, if we look at the formula, it's a, uh, it involves E, which is the material, also involves the density. So if we need to pick a material that um, E over rho is uh, E divided by rho is different. Now it happens aluminium and steel have a very similar ratio e, e over rho. Concrete is quite similar. Um, so I'm going to pick a very different you know, material, which has a, a completely different ratio between stiffness and density. And one that is um, convenient in ANSYS, no other reason, um, I will go into engineering data and I'll pick um, there's one standard material, polyethylene. So I'm going to look at engineering data sources, general materials. Um, and here's polyethylene. I should be going to add that. And click on engineering data sources again to close it. Polyethylene is here. Okay. So this is what we're saying. That it's the ratio between the E and then change the units there to SI units. E is 2 by 10 to the 11 pascals, density 7850. If I look at polyethylene, the density is 10 times lower. The E value is 2 by 10 to the 11, 1 by 10 to, is 20 times lower. So, so there's a, the ratio between them is quite different. Okay, So if we go back into the... Um, we close the engineering data, we go back into our model, double click on that, we get the message about upstream data, that's the, the, the material data that I've changed, has changed, so we're going to read that. Now, if you go into the geometry and then click on the solid, you see this is where the material is. So if we go there, we have our concrete aluminium polyethylene, so I'll pick polyethylene simply and right click on that and solve. That is to we solve there you go there we go again i'll pause on this it's probably going to take about 20 seconds yeah it just took just slightly under uh, 20 seconds okay now if we look down at the frequencies here if you remember this was 33 that has changed um this if i look back 33 
184 for the next node about the minor axis. So, so that has become kind of uh, 39. So they've changed quite substantially as, as, uh, as I'd expect. Okay, so the stiffness of the polyethylene is relatively low compared to its mass. Now, note here what I was saying earlier, these descriptions have not updated. So I need to just right click and then and rename based on definition and we'll pick up the, the, the recalculated modes of frequencies, okay? So if we quickly look at the modes and see that is vibration about the minor axis, vibration about the major axis, same modes, but just lower frequency. That's the second mode about the minor axis. That's a torsional mode. That's a higher mode about the minor axis. And that's the higher mode about the major axis, the stiffer axis. So that uh, ends that as quite simple. Once you've defined the structure, it can be a much more complex structure than this. To get the modes of vibration, the frequencies of vibration, so it's, it's quite an uh, easy step to, to, to replace the structural and static structural analysis with the model analysis.